All right, well, welcome everyone. My name is Deb Taylor. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Ohio Students, sponsored by the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. I wanna thank you for joining us this evening. I have a, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. First, you can use uh, the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions uh, to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so we, uh, the speakers, uh, the presenters cannot hear you or see you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the complete schedule at the website oacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week at the same website, oacac.org. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our presenter. Thanks so much, Deb. Thanks for your kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ellen Turner, and I'm Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Kenyon College, uh, located in Gambier, Ohio. And I have brought with me uh, some excellent Kenyan experts tonight. Um, and I'm going to have each of our students introduce themselves first, um, tell you um, not only their name, but where they're from, what their academic interests happens to be, and also their extracurricular involvement. And then when they're done, my colleague Ian Dooley uh, from the admissions office will introduce himself. And Kiam, in our funny little squares that I can see, you're immediately to um, on, on top on the top square next to me. So I'm going to ask that you start by introducing yourself first. All right, thank you, Ellen. Um, hi, I'm Kiam Stewart. Uh, he him. I'm a rising senior philosophy major and law and society concentrator, as well as uh, African diaspora studies concentrator. Um, in terms of extracurriculars, I have been a part of the varsity track team. Um, I have also participated in affinity groups such as Black Student Union, uh, African Student Association, and um, Men of Color. Uh, Aside from that, I have done work with the admissions office at Kenyon College, as well as uh, the Kenyon Library helpline. Two things, Kian. Yes. Maybe you said it, and I missed it. Where are you from? Oh, yes. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't say that, actually. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And also, um, where were you last year? You were in a Kenyan. Last year. <laughs> um, I, was, I wasn't at Kenyon. I was uh, actually studying abroad. Uh, I was in um, in Stockholm, Sweden, the first semester, and for the early portion of the second semester, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Kim. Dan, in our Hollywood Squares configuration, you're on the other side of me. Can you introduce Hi, everyone. I'm Dan. I am a senior political science major and public policy concentrator from a small town in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm involved with a bunch of different things on campus besides being an admissions worker. I am a uh, part of student government and also a leader of the Rural Cause, which is an organization that helps connect Kenyan to its place in rural central Ohio. Oh, Sarah, I'm sorry. I think I was on mute. Thanks, Dan, very much. Sarah, would you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah. She, her, hers. I'm a junior um, from outside of Boston, Massachusetts, um, and I major, I, I'm a double major in drama and English. Um, and outside of admissions and outside of the classroom, um, I'm involved with many student theater groups at Kenyon, um, including our production company that produces work written by women, as well as our improvised comedy team. Wonderful. Thanks, Sarah. Sierra. Hi, my name is Sierra. I'm a junior from Bel Air, Maryland. Um, I'm an, a neuroscience major, and I'm forgetting that for some reason. <laughs> a neuroscience major with an environmental studies concentration. I'm also pre-med. Um, outside of academics, I'm a member of the varsity track and field team. I'm a sprinter. Um, I play club soccer. I write and create artwork for a science literary journal called Lyceum. Feel free to check, check it out. Um, I also play clarinet in the symphonic wind ensemble on campus, and I'm one of the STEM scholars. 
So everybody must be wondering when my students sleep because they're all involved doing so many different things. But they, they, they do get some good sleep as well. Now my colleague, Ian Dooley. Thank you, Ellen. Um, as Ellen said, my name is Ian Dooley. I am a second year admissions counselor here at Kenya. I'm certainly an incredibly proud member of the Kenya community. And I represent Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Michigan, Missouri, Nebraska, Western New York, Oklahoma, West, Western Pennsylvania, as well as West Virginia, and transfer students. So quite the list of territories. I'm certainly proud to represent um, those uh, territories. Um, and today I'll be moderating the Q&A um, form of today's uh, conversation. Um, so please feel free to submit questions. We certainly encourage that. Um, and back to Alan. Ian, thanks so much. I'll just reiterate what you said about submitting questions. We find when we're doing this kind of format that we actually get to um, live off of our audience. And the more questions that you submit, um, the more we can make our presentation relevant and important to you, because that's what we really want to do. We could, we could talk about ourselves and we could talk about Kenyan all day. But what we really want to do is get to the heart of the matter here in terms of what interests you about Kenyan College. Um, so I, I should have also said, because Ian goes on about his territories, I forgot to introduce mine, but it reminded me of it. So the reason that I am the moderator today is because I cover the entire state of Ohio, um, which is over 800 high schools. Um, it's a lot, um, and I love every moment of it. And I also uh, work with students who come to us from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, and I am the admissions office liaison to a program, and some of you in the audience may be be familiar with it. It's called the um, CAP or um, the Kenyan um, uh, uh, Art Articulation Project, which works with high school students. It's the dual credit program um, that works uh, for um, uh, with Kenyan and high school students. So if you are familiar with that, um, I'm the liaison from the admissions office to the CAP program. So um, a couple of things that I want to tell you to sort of set the stage that I think is important. First of all, um, you may already know this, but Kenyon is the oldest private college in the state of Ohio. We were founded in 1824. And we're home to just over 1,700 students that come from 48 different states uh, and 49 different countries. Now, you heard my students who introduced themselves tonight, nobody's from Ohio, which is a little strange. Um, several of my Ohio students had uh, seminars tonight, so they couldn't join us, but only about 11% of our students are from the state of Ohio. Um, and as we go through talking about Kenyon and its place where we are, I think that will become a really important factor and maybe an important factor in your decision. Because I feel like the students who come to Kenyon from Ohio still get to experience the real going away from home, being exposed to different ideas, different ways of being and that kind of thing because so many students are coming from all around the country and all around the world. Um, in fact, um, it has been um, for about 200 years that students and faculty have been drawn to Kenyon and Gambier as a place to engage in a journey that really celebrates study and exploration. The students and faculty also seek to be part of not only that intellectually lively com uh, community, but also one that is socially engaged and engaged really at its highest levels. Um, so to get us started tonight, I would like each of you to share your story about what attracted you to Kenyon. How did you find yourself in Gambier, Ohio um, and at Kenyon College? Um, at the end of your search process. And let's go in reverse order. Um, since we started with Kim, let's start with Sierra and, and then just keep on going in order so I don't have to call on you. Thanks. Sounds good. Um, so to give a little bit of background, I came from a STEM magnet program in Maryland and I knew the whole time when I was in high school though that I had a wide variety of interests but I hadn't quite come across the term liberal arts yet and I wasn't sure if liberal arts and STEM could coincide but then I got this lovely email from a Kenyan professor who ended up being my first year advisor, Professor Hicks, and she invited me to apply to Kenyan STEM Scholar Program. And just that little touch of like extra guidance that I received during the college admissions process really meant a lot to me because it can be a really overwhelming time and I can imagine how much more overwhelming it can feel right now even. So to have 
like a professor personally reached out to me from Kenya and really meant a lot and kind of showed me that they care about individual students. So it made me explore Kenyan's STEM program a little more. I came in toward the campus and I got the idea that they really care about you as an individual there and you can explore a wide variety of your interest and that's ultimately what sold me on Kenyan. I think I'm next. Um, so um, I first heard about Kenyan um, from my dad, who's class of 89, um, and, and Ellen actually admitted him to Kenyan. That was a fun bonding moment for us. Um, but uh, I, I would say he's like a pretty typical alum in the sense that he's very passionate about Kenyan, um, which made me in a sort of defiant moment tell him that I didn't want to look at Kenyan at all. I wanted to forge my own path. Um, obviously, underwent a little bit of a change of heart, ended up applying ED2, um, but we were looking at other schools in Ohio, um, and he said, just go on a tour to humor him, and if I don't like it, it's okay. Um, of course, when I got there, um, I found that Kenyon really had everything I was looking for in a college, um, and particularly um, something that I was looking for was, um, I went to a public high school that was pretty rigorous and also just very competitive, um, like a very competitive environment. And my favorite thing about Kenyon um, is that everyone is so engaged intellectually and academically, but that never really manifests itself as competition. There's not really a lot of like talking about grades. Everything's very collaborative. Um, so I really got to like continue to love school and love my classes without having to, um, you know, be burdened by all of the pressure that sometimes comes with school. So um, that's one of one of the things that drew me to Kenyon. Um, but just, you know, after I, you know, got to go to campus and walk around, was definitely caught by the bug <laughs> that I had seen in my family for many years. So um, never looked back. <laughs> so as I said, I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. So this adding to um, in, at Kenyon, which is in a small town in Ohio, uh, it was a very similar one. It was a very familiar environment. And I knew growing up uh, in that environment that that was, that was one in which I strived in. Um, and I liked uh, growing up in a small, um, a small community with a small school where I knew my teachers and could forge, um, you know, strong relationships with them as well as lasting friendships. And that was basically what I wanted uh, in a college as well. And we looked at a lot of different small liberal arts schools that matched the profile of Kenyon. Uh, and but the one that really... Uh, clicked the most was was Kenyon uh, for the I think the reason um, really was the beauty of campus um, and then the community aspect too I mean it's a beautiful campus if you have the opportunity to go um, I highly recommend taking the drive to uh, to Gambier and especially this time of year and this is this time of year three years ago or four years ago that I um, <laughs> that I was visiting um, it is the perfect season there, uh, and matched with that in the community that I, or the people that I met over my uh, visit weekend, I knew that that was, uh, that was the place for me. All right, so for me, um, as a premise in high school, I played uh, multiple sports, and I was really interested in playing uh, and doing a sport in college and continuing that in college. Um, and I first uh, really discovered Kenyon through um, the football team. I, I believe they, they reached out and I, uh, and I was interested in taking a visit and I was like, wow, I, I never really heard of Kenyon before. Um, however, this looks like a really good school uh, because I was also um, looking for a school that you know, had, uh, had the resources that Kenyon has. So I, uh, I took a visit in the spring of, uh, I believe my, my senior year. And um, what the first thing that I noticed was how passionate the students were, you know, and it, feel, and it felt like um, 
it felt like I could put myself in there and be okay. Um, the way students interacted with each other was really huge. Uh, and, uh, I, and I think something that's really important is going to a place where you feel like you can sort of um, fit in and uh, sort of uh, go with the current in a way. Um, and of course, you know, Kenyon has a really good current, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what caught my eye is the fact that students had Im an impact, you know, and, and that they could impact what they, um, what they chose to impact. And I don't think a f the concept of a fly on the wall exists at Kenyon. I think every student has uh, some sort of impact that creates the overall experience that all students enjoy. Wow, thanks guys, that was great. You know, one of the common threads that I heard from all of you was all about fit. Um, and as somebody who spent some years being a high school guidance counselor in between the time I admitted Sarah's dad and now, because I wasn't in Gambier for all that time, um, I was a high school guidance counselor on the East Coast and fit is so key, you know, and I think you heard every one of them reflect on their experience as a senior and feeling a little afraid about it and trying to figure out how that fit might work. Um, and I think we've, we've had a couple questions come in. I can, I can see those numbers yes. changing. So. so we have a question with regards to, um, is there a study abroad program at Kenyon? Could we speak a little bit about that and what some of the programs are like? And similarly, if we've had those experiences, maybe speak to those as well. Oh, I think you're muted, Ellen. I'm sorry, Cam, why don't you get started since you are uh, fresh off of, of study abroad? Yeah, so abroad was an amazing um, opportunity, I think. And, and the fact that Kenyon really makes that easy is, is awesome. Um, so me personally, I, I went to, like I said earlier, Stockholm, Sweden, as well as um, Washington, DC in the second semester. Um, so just a little background about the whole thing. Most students at Kenyon, like just a little over 50% go abroad. And that's a part, partially because Kenyon makes it so easy. Um, Kenyon covers 100% um, of need-based financial aid. So, and that transfers over to, to um, the abroad costs. So um, it makes it easy for uh, any student of any socioeconomic status to go across um, overseas or even domestic off-campus study. Um, and that is an opportunity that a lot of places don't give, honestly, and you know, a lot of people don't have the luxury of, of being able to study abroad, something I'm very grateful for because it gives you a mindset of um, a, a world, an international mindset, I guess, a view of the bigger picture, it seems. Um, and, and I think that's something that is, is, uh, the sooner you get it, the better, honestly. And, uh, Kenyon doing that is, is, is awesome. Um, and like I said, they make it really easy. Uh, it was incredibly easy for me and it was totally worth it. Almost a steal. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. So I, I'll just add uh, really quickly um, that there are over 200 programs that go, and Cam was very clear to say that it's not just abroad, but also we have domestic exchange programs. Dan, you look like you want to say something. You got up close to the camera, so I thought you were ready to say something. No, I did not go abroad, no. Oh, okay, but I thought you maybe had, like you were to tell somebody's story. Um, is there anything else that folks want to add from friends that they've, I think, I think we've covered it. I mean, the, the deal is this, that um, students work with their advisors um, and with the folks in um, our, our global um, office and they find a program that matches if they want to do it. Um, and most students have an excellent experience and in fact, um, our research shows that a lot of students, um, after they've done one term abroad at Kenyon, either apply for another term or a summer away um, uh, that is sponsored by Kenyon, um, or they do significantly travel after they've graduated from Kenyon. And I think what Cam said that was so important is about broadening one's experience. You know, you can learn about the world from books all the time, you know, and, and, and faculty. Faculty have had great experiences, and your peers that come from all around the world. But when you begin to experience it yourself it puts it puts you in a, it puts you in a totally different and you have a different perspective on the world which is really important 
Um, any other academic questions, Anne, right now before we go on? So we have another question with regards to the classroom experience. You know, looking at Kenyon in the sense that small class sizes are the hallmark of, of a Kenyan, one's Kenyan experience in terms of a, uh, academics. Maybe we could speak to um, our experiences inside the classroom. Um, let me let me put a twist to that. Why don't we talk a little bit about the class that surprised you the most in terms of, um, you know, a, a, like you were just blown away by what you learned and uh, the interaction that you had with faculty and, and other students in the class. Um, and Dan, you looked like you, again, had something that you might want to say. So why don't you get Yeah, started? I can add. Um, I was thinking that my immediate answer is, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but then I would thought about my psychology of language class that I'm in right now, actually. Uh, and as you all can imagine, I mean, it's virtual and that puts a very bizarre twist to it. Um, but I was expecting a very rote, normal, basic, um, lecture-based class, uh, psychology class, uh, and I get an email from my professor like midway through the summer saying, what's your address? I need to send you these learning boxes. We're going to do some like interactive projects. And here she handmade like 10 like boxes for each student in the class. Like there's like 25 of us sent them all away to do different, different things, um, coloring the brain, coloring um, words on, on gravestones, um, speaking and, and trying dialects with while well, sucking candy, all those different things to make the, Ken, the, the Kenyan virtual experience interactive and has really, I think, has been the best, um, best person, uh, or done, done the best job at making Kenyan virtual learning um, worth it, yeah. Thanks so much. I should mention right now that we are de-densified at Kenyon, so only the first years and the sophomores and some upper class students who have specific tasks are on campus. The majority of our other students are off campus and that's to make the place um, as, as, and then we'll flip at the semester and all the upper class students will be on campus, but we're really trying to do it to make uh, things as safe as possible and so far, I mean, knocking on wood, uh, we've been good. Um, Sierra or Sarah, do one of you want to reflect on your experience in the classroom at Kenya, a favorite class? Um, well, going off your question of like a class that kind of surprised us, um, Kenyan does have some distribution requirements, um, which at first, I will admit, made me kind of nervous. Um, I'm a, a fine arts and humanities major, so um, my classes in those areas were kind of covered by the classes I was already planning on taking, but then I had to take other classes in the social science and natural science sections, and I was particularly very nervous about natural science. It was something that I really struggled with in high school um, and like was kind of hoping I might avoid it in college, but it was all for the better. Um, and my freshman year, I was in an intro to psych class. And then at the same time, I was in um, a class um, that was like sort of like a crash course in production design for like theater productions, um, which was like for um, very closely related to my theater major. Um, I just remember there was one day that um, I had the class uh, like a day apart from each other and I went into my theater class and I you know listened to this lecture that the professor gave about color theory and um, like how that worked with costume design and how you know color can tell you about a character and here's what colors stand out to the eye and here's what colors you know create a more passive look for the character and all this stuff and I was like wow so interesting. I went into my psych class the next day and heard very uh, pretty much the same lecture on color theory. Um, and I was just like blown away, uh, mostly because I, I, I didn't really foresee those classes intersecting at all. Um, and I was expecting that, you know, I would, I would go into like science brain um, and have that kind of be its own thing, go into my fine arts brain and have that be its own thing. Um, but I think, you know, and since then I found that almost every semester, even in like the weirdest ways, there's always some 
really cool overlap between my classes. Um, so that's something that's like always kind of like surprised me every semester, but I love it. Um, and it's, um, I think it just, you know, goes to show um, in kind of the philosophy of Kenyan that like no student is really like just one thing um, or like has one interest. Um, so it's always kind of cool to see that sort of value like play out in the classroom. You are uh, just described the true nature of a liberal arts and sciences education. So thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate it. Uh, Sierra, do you have anything that you would like to add and then Kiam? Sure. I was sitting here the whole time trying to think of just one class <laughs> that I can talk about because I've enjoyed so many different ones. But I think something good to bring up would be um, that Kenyon has classes called special topics that have been some of like, my favorite classes to take. I see everyone nodding. <laughs> like they're, they're definitely some of my favorite parts of Kenyon. And usually I like to think of the classes as kind of like a passion project of a professor. So they're usually only offered for like one or two semester, but a professor will decide to teach a class like dedicated solely to a topic they're really interested in. So I took a class fall semester of my sophomore year called um, Neuroscience of Epigenetics and it was taught by like a visiting professor in the neuroscience department who had graduated from Kenyon like a couple years ago and my favorite and she'd come into the class each day and her PhD thesis was actually in like neuroepigenetics which is basically like how you can modify the DNA sequence in your brain without modifying the sequence itself, if that makes sense, um, to express certain genes. So she would come in each class and we'd decide what we wanted to learn about the next week. So her PhD project was on how like alcohol, like adolescent, like alcohol, Hall abuse impact at neuroepigenetics and then she'd come up with like a new topic for the next week that we all agreed upon and then just make the class about that so and the class had like 12 people in it so it was pretty amazing because we would all just come in and we could decide what we wanted to learn about as a group and it was super flexible and really awesome and the professor ended up staying for the full year so a group of us enjoyed the class so much we actually ended up doing research with her and just kind of the small and like very personal nature of Kenyan. There was like four of us in our research group and we'd like sit around each week, eat food and discuss like what project we wanted to do. And we got to do like data analysis projects all like on a topic of our choice and had like individual attention from her. And that was something that as a science student, I was just like blown away that I was able to have that experience as an undergrad because not many times do you get to sit with a researcher and do like, like new research as an undergrad that actually feels important. So that was the class that surprised me the most at Kenyon. Sarah, thanks so much for um, sharing that story. I think one of the things that you said that's so important is that um, the education that happens at Kenyon, while our focus is the student, the reality is that the faculty feel like they learn as much from their students. And it's a shared enterprise. It's not just a one-way train. You know, and a couple students mentioned lecture classes. Yes, there are some lecture classes at Kenyon, but you'll find the vast majority of classes are seminar classes where you and the faculty are going at it, uh, or the faculty member, or uh, in some cases, if it's if it's uh, taught by two, um, a couple of faculty members. And um, I think it's that shared journey that really is the hallmark of, uh, of a Kenyan education. So thank you for bringing up that, that special piece. Um, Kim, is there anything that you want to add about um, a particular class? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Sierra actually reminded me of the, a special topic I took. Um, it was philosophy of biology. Uh, it's a special, uh, special topic in um, the philosophy department and uh, talked about primarily a lot of bioethic stuff, you know, and then that's a pretty like front end um, uh, issue, you know, right now and will be so for like many years to come. Um, so it's really, it's a really important uh, topic and um, the conversations showed that they were always relevant. They were, it was always interesting. Um, and the, uh, the professor who taught it, uh, Professor Alexandra Bradner, uh, her brother is actually um, Jay Bradner, uh, who is the CEO of Novartis um, a Biomedical uh, Company. And he, she actually got him to come and do a talk at Kenyon. Um, and uh, the, our class was in attendance for that. And uh, I know definitely some uh, 
you know, we converted with some uh, good amount of STEM students as well um, for that talk, which is awesome. Um, he talked about uh, trying to cure cancer and all this awesome stuff. It was pretty, pretty like, it was awesome to essentially sit in and, and study like a highly relevant uh, topic. So, yeah. Thanks, Kim. Uh, proving once again that a liberal arts and sciences education is relevant in today's world. And in fact, it's really, it, it, it's, it's critical, it's important, because you have to think about all these different factors that come into play when we're trying to solve problems. And that's what these guys, my colleagues here, do every day in all of their classes. So it's really wonderful. Ian, do we have any more questions that have come in? We don't have any more questions, but I noticed that Sierra had brought up an excellent point in talking about undergraduate research. So maybe we could talk about that. I think that is really um, a distinction at King and amongst our peer institutions. Great, thanks, Sierra. You want to talk a little yeah. bit about that for us? Sure, I can get started. Um, I shared a little bit of my story, but I always like to share the story of one of my friends because I think it's uh, it's pretty representative of the un undergraduate like research experience you can get at Kenyon. So I had a friend who had no research experience coming into Kenyon from high school and first semester freshman year she was able to get a paid position in a um, cancer biology lab at Kenyon and um, is now she's now a junior and publishing as a first author on a paper. So that's not common at like many other institutions. I think a large part of the reason why you can get such like in-depth research experience as, as an undergrad at Kenyon is because Kenyon's a college and not a university, which wasn't something I like understood the distinction of as a high school student. But if you're co college, you have mainly like an undergraduate focus. So if it's a STEM student, you're not going to be competing with graduate students and like real adults <laughs> for positions in a lab. So you get to do basically like graduate level work because of that. And that's something I think that's really important. Um, as for research, um, just in general at Kenyon, I think it's really important to say too, it doesn't only occur within like the STEM disciplines. Um, I see other people nodding. So if you guys have experience with research outside of STEM, like feel free to jump in and interrupt me. Um, but I know we do offer like a summer science program for STEM like STEM students where they can do research for the entire summer at Kenyon and get paid for it. But there's also like a summer legal scholars program where you can do like legal science research over the summer and plenty of other things. But I'll let anyone else take it away from here. Yeah, I, I can actually speak to the uh, legal scholars thing because I actually did summer legal scholars in uh, 2019. Um, it was, it was awesome. I think uh, it's really important to know that you can research in any uh, major at Kenyon. And um, due to the same reason Sierra was talking about, you know, they're not gonna be competing with um, uh, much more experienced students or anything like that. And you really have the opportunity to um, really spread your wings and, and go where you wanna go. Um, particularly for me, I proposed my own research um, and had it uh, supported by a, a professor. Um, uh, it was on, it was about specifically about police ethics. So I, I combined essentially my major of philosophy as well as uh, my concentration of law and society and um, you know, cross-referenced the law versus um, ethical standards um, and um, uh, the mission and values of the police department um, and and whatnot. So I was specifically studying the Metropolitan Police Department in DC, and I was you know, I was physically there doing ethnographic writing as well as uh, researching um, actual hard text and legal documents as well. So um, and I it culminated it was culminated in a, in a research paper, uh, which I'm very proud of. And I took me like a few months to to actually finish, but it was worth it. So. It was legitimate research, which I'm glad to say, you know, I was able to do that as an undergraduate. So uh, crazy opportunity. I don't think I would have done that if I went somewhere else than other than Kenyon, honestly. Not only um, is it something to be proud of, but it's really excellent preparation when you think that you might at some point go to graduate school. Um, there was without question, um, was I, I was certainly prepared for my graduate studies because of all the different research or the kinds of things that I was involved in, the paper writing that I was doing at Kenya. So that, that definitely that definitely came forward. I'm, I'm a little concerned that we have been 
heavily, heavily into academics. Not that we shouldn't be. I mean, that's great. That's really what Kenyon's about because we're, we look for students who are serious and want to be engaged in the work. We also support students throughout anything they want to do. Um, and uh, our faculty are excellent as faculty advisors. Kenyon um, actually has, takes some pride in that the first um, evidence of faculty advising in the United States um, is documented at Kenyon College by a former president of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes, in a letter that he wrote to his mother. So we know that the faculty um, have been doing this for a long time and really encourage students to go in lots of different directions, which is really wonderful. But I'd like you all to talk just about uh, a few things quickly about outside of the classroom. Like, what gives you joy in Gambier when you're not working? Because certainly there have got to be other things that you do. We've mentioned that, you know, Kenyon's location is, it's rural, um, and yet um, with students coming from all around the country and, and around the world, it's not like kids leave and go home on the weekend. They have to be able to do something. You can't just hop a plane to LA, um, Kim, on the weekend if you're bored, right? It doesn't work. So um, let's talk about life outside. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Take it away. Really vibrant uh, campus life at Kenyon, uh, thanks to all of the students and their interests. Um, and the fact that we, yes, we do have all these different interests. We come from all the different places and we're finding each other in this, in this one specific place. And we, and we have campus bands, um, and we have a space called the Horn Gallery where students perform. Um, they do, they, they perform music, they perform spoken word. Um, they put on, uh, art exhibits, student focused art exhibits. Uh, Sarah's in um, <laughs> a sketch comedy at Kenyon, Fools on the Hill. Uh, and th that really gets, keeps the community going and, and sustains the community. Uh, we also have uh, the Kenyon Farm, which is a student run uh, farm on campus a bit down the road. Um, it's a beautiful setting and I think that a lot of students have, from what I hear from, from my friends on campus, they're, they're really, they're finding themselves um, going down there more and more to really, it's like a form of therapy and a lot of people that weren't, um, who aren't, don't have previous experience in farming or agriculture find themselves in that environment and want to take advantage of that. I mean, that's always been true and I think that some of like the relationships that um, we form uh, at Kenyon are definitely because of our sense of place, because the environment really forces us all to be reflective and contemplative um, and inward um, in our community. And, and, and that, again, it sustains, the, it sustains it. Great, thanks so much, Dan. Does anybody else want to comment on, uh, I'll just say a couple things, unless Sarah, you want to talk about theater at all really quickly? Just a little bit quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, theater, student theater um, at Kenyon is like a huge and like very varied um, program. Um, so there are four faculty directed plays every semester, um, which there's also like no preference for drama majors in the casting and, and work on those shows, which is awesome. Um, but then beyond that, there are usually like around 30 other productions um, on campus every year. That's not, also not counting comedy shows. There's improv, uh, sketch comedy, stand up. Those are, those are in addition. Um, and all of those 30 shows are completely produced by students. So um, I went into college with no theatrical design experience and since have done a lot of that, it's like very much a program or I guess not a program, but you know, an environment where everyone's just kind of like encouraged to do a little bit of everything. And so I've learned so much just from like shadowing my peers who are, you know, doing sound design or doing costume design um, and that kind of thing. And um, I think that def it definitely sort of like fuels into what Dan was saying of like, you're never not gonna have anything to do um, on, a, on a weekend night. Um, like most, most of my weekends are usually spent going to shows because there's so many. And at this point, like, I'm like, oh, I know someone in that show. I know someone in that show, like, gotta go see everyone shine. Um, but like, even then, um, like there are still people who, you know, they just sort of do like one show every semester. And that's, you know, kind of like a fun, different thing for them. 
Um, I actually, I directed a show my sophomore year and uh, one of my actors was on the rugby team and I was like taking tickets one night and I look into the audience and like the entire rugby team is like in the front row, like ready and like very excited. So right. um, definitely great. like many, many opportunities Thanks. to get involved. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, you heard Kiam and Sierra both talk about the fact that they've been involved in track and field. About 30% of our students do um, varsity athletics. About a third of them are involved in co-recreational athletics. And then the other third aren't couch potatoes. They often use uh, the CAC, which is the Student Athletic Center, uh, I mean the Kenyan Athletic Center. And um, it's a wonderful facility. Students are also involved. Dan mentioned connection to the community. About 70 to 75% of our students do some kind of community service at Kenyon. That's really important. We're connected to Mount Vernon, which is the closest town. It's about five miles away, and students are involved in uh, life there on lots of different levels. So we are getting close to the end, um, and I want to take, if we have a couple minutes at the end, I will, I'll let the students take one more question, but I, I want to give you some information about admissions and financial aid. First of all, we wish you were at Kenyon right now on our beautiful campus. We wish we were all there right now on our beautiful campus, and we hope that you will take the time to explore um, our Visit Kenyon uh, option on our website. Um, we have uh, virtual tours that are available. We also have tours that are available with a live guide, although they are done virtually. Um, and that's something that's really new and wonderful, I think. Um, and then we will, are also starting in October, uh, going to offer, we have a very limited visiting available on campus where you would have a walk and a talk with an admissions officer. You would not be able to go into any buildings um, because we're still protecting our students in terms of our, and we have a whole protocol with COVID, but we really are, um, if, if a student, particularly if you're a senior, we can't only do it for seniors, um, we're uh, offering that as an option. Also, students could do interviews uh, with any of our senior fellows, uh, we encourage that. Uh, we also have information sessions um, held daily and um, once a week at night. Um, and I encourage that because, you know, if you've got four different pictures here, you would have four different stories about Kenyon, but you would be surprised at how much the threads, the threads knit together. It's, it's just, it's, it's really stunning. Um, and um, Ian is posting some information in the Q&A about um, Kenyon. We, uh, and our admissions process, we have two uh, admissions tracks, either early decision or regular decision. Early decision is either November 15th or our early decision two deadline is January 15th. Um, we take about half of our students through early decision. Um, and so with over 6,000 applications a year for about 485 places, um, the students who are serious about it often do go early decision on that, and that works out quite nicely for them. Um, for your application, um, this year we are being test optional at Kenyon, um, and so uh, you do not have to submit your scores unless you want to. Um, and you're certainly welcome to if you have taken them, but they will not be held against you if you don't submit them. We're going to be um, spending a lot of focus, the admissions committee uh, will be spending a lot of focus on your transcript, the courses you've taken, um, and how well you've done in those courses, as well as on your application. And we feel really strongly about um, having that application read by at least minimally two readers, um, and a lot of attention is paid on your essay. We care about writing at Kenyon. That's something that's really, really true. Also, Ian has posted in the Q&A information about financial aid. Kenyon's expensive. All education in the United States is pretty expensive. Um, and yet, at Kenyon, we pledge to meet the full need of any student who is accepted to the college. That full need is full demonstrated need, which is uh, figured out um, by a federal formula. We have two tools on our website that you might utilize to help you find out kind of how it might fit into your family budget. One um, is um, uh, the net price calculator. Every college in the country is required to have, the college or university in the country is required to have that on their website. Please use it. We also put another tool up called My Intuition. Um, and both of them, I think, help your family um, utilizing your parents' prior year income tax information to find out what kind of aid you would qualify for at Kenyon. Um, we have both need-based aid 
and we have merit-based aid. About 20% of our students qualify for merit-based aid. Within merit-based aid, there are some specific talent scholarships in writing, in music, um, and in studio art. We also have our KEEP and STEM scholars. Sierra mentioned uh, STEM scholars. And because of our timing, and I'm really trying to watch my time here since they're gonna stop us at 7.45, um, please check out our website because all that information is there. You'll also notice that all of us put our emails um, in our screens, uh, with the exception of Ian and me, but Ian and I, our, um, our, uh, our emails are available on the Kenyon website. So feel free to be in touch with us or with any of my colleagues that I brought along, the Kenyon students who really know the score at Kenyon now. They're, they're our real experts, and I'm grateful to each of you for coming tonight and sharing your Kenyon story. So um, we hope you have a lovely evening. We hope you will uh, continue to look into Kenyon and come back and um, explore on our campus or explore us virtually. Thank you so much. And we have a few announcements, I believe, from OACAC. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Ellen, and everyone at Kenyon. Um, I, I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. When you close your window, you will find a link to a very quick four-question survey. Uh, we would really appreciate your feedback, so I hope you will consider filling this out. that out. Um, also, this was just one of the many sessions being hosted, so be sure to check out the additional sessions at oacac.org. And again, this session was recorded along with many others. Please feel free to go to the website. You can scroll down the page. The recordings are at the bottom. oacac.org is where you will find it. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>